Hello everyone, so good to see you. How you doing? I hope you're doing well. Me? I'm... I'm in a state right now. So at the Xbox Game Showcase, Atlas went off with games like Persona 5 Tactica, an entirely new IP called Metaphor Refantasio, which I have a whole lot to say about, but for another time. But before those two, we got, well, the officially released trailer for Persona 3 Reload, the one that we might have reacted to more than once. Pray for intern Kuhn, who accidentally released two trailers on Instagram a couple of days early. I hope that they're, um, still alive. But jokes aside, this is pretty huge. There have been rumors and rumblings of this for a long time now. There was a serious amount of smoke when there was this alleged footage from an internal Sega Japan meeting that leaked featuring Sonic Frontiers, a new Jet Set Radio, and a new Persona 3. We know fake leaks can be pretty convincing, but this did seem different. The model for Yukari was brand new compared to the one used in Dancing in Moonlight. And the major one, there's an early version of the Caterpillar miniboss that you can see in the Frontiers art book, which came out after this footage would have been recorded. That would have made this extremely hard to fake. Around this time, the domain name p3re.jp was registered anonymously, which we now know stands for Persona 3 Reload. So yeah, not exactly the best kept secret. At this point, us in the Persona community were just dying to know, what kind of remake would this be? Would it be mainly redoing assets, tweaking the story, using content from Fest or Portable, building it from the ground up? Well, it's some of those things, as we found out through various news outlets after the trailer was shown at the Xbox Game Showcase. Before delving into these details, we should definitely talk about the trailer itself first. It's not a very long one, so we'll try and breeze through it real quick. We're introduced to our first and only shots of Aegis in her summer dress, a rather iconic moment from when the party visits Yakushima. And we can see right away, these models are clearly not the same. On the right is Aegis from Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight. And yeah, not even thinking about the lighting, the structure and the face alone looks very different. These are absolutely being remade, this cannot be contended. From here we get a nice good look at Gekukan High School. Our protagonist Makoto Yuki is carrying a bag now. There's probably not a cat in there. The positioning of portraits has been adjusted so it's more in line with Persona 4 and 5, and there's this lovely royal blue contrasting the bright font on the screen. You can definitely see where the inspiration from Persona 5 comes in, with the drop shadows and the assets that are constantly animating. We always had a top-down view in Persona 3, so being able to see the sky in this shot really does a lot to make the space feel that much more open. People who have been dying to run around in the field areas again since Persona 3 Portable are living for this right now. And here's something new. Oh man, we can actually cook and use the kitchen now? And we might be able to pack food for our trips to Tartarus, kind of like when you made dishes at LeBlanc in Persona 5. Seeing them in aprons is pretty cute too. I'm guessing we can cook with all of our party members, which should be fun. Especially where some characters like Fuka, whose entire social link pretty much revolved around cooking. It doesn't look like Yukari was very successful this time around. Oh my goodness, look at how nice Polonia Mall looks. The club, the cafe, the accessory shop which is closed right now, the police station. And just, it looks so much more lived in. There's people everywhere outside, it's nice to see a population here. Kenji is here looking as punchable as ever, but slightly less so with this new art. He got kind of a glow up compared to the original. I am reminded that telling Kenji to shut up is always the right answer. Kurosawa's space looks a bit different. It seems like you're going to be doing business round the back instead of, you know, where a police officer can be seen selling guns to high school students right at the front desk. We get a look at that sweet UI, which kind of reminds me more of Persona 4 right now. Maybe it's the keep out tape. We can see some weapons like the rainbow. I'm pretty sure that's an entirely new weapon. Notice that the description says for Yukari as well. In Persona 3, the main hero can use any and all weapons in the game, from swords to bowls to polyarms, but I wonder if you're going to be locked to swords this time. This tab is just for Yukari, so they might be simplifying it and possibly dividing which swords your character in Misuru can use. After some sweet Latin text that says Dark Hour, we see some bits of the iconic scene of the first full moon. Note that there's no animated cutscenes in the entire trailer, but we do get screenshots later confirmed that yes, we will indeed get those, there was never any doubt of that. This one in particular looks like it can be from the opening animation for the game. That's a shot to have music by Lotus Juice rapping in the background if I ever did see one. Then we get, oh boy, hold on ladies and gentlemen, everyone's favorite, the return of Tartarus. And yeah, it does look structurally different from this tiny bit that we can see compared to the very samey halls of the original. But we can also see that you're on floor 123 of the 4th block to Zaya. Without spoiling it, yeah, there are... a lot of floors. And I feel like Atlas put this here to curb our expectations for the structure of this place. 
Looking at the map, it's definitely wider, more opened up, with room for variation this time around, but we definitely need to see more at a future date. I'm very curious how they're going to take the tedium of going up even just these 100 plus floors without some of us losing our minds. And here we go with battles. I am immediately celebrating that we can control our whole party. Some of us will never recover from Fest letting the AI take the wheel. If it looks like Persona 5, it, it, yeah, of course it does. It's the game that came out after Persona 5. But this UI is a lot more subtle and less loud than that game. This is actually a pretty big improvement from the original. In both Fest and Portable, you had this scrolling wheel to select your options from. It's designed like a revolver of a gun, with the options spinning around on a cylinder. It's a bit more obvious in Portable. However, and I know people got used to this in time, but it was kind of annoying to scroll the wheel to where you needed it to go. Sometimes you'd hit up or down and it wouldn't go the way you wanted. While it fits thematically, it's arguably cumbersome. But if you look real closely, you can see that the buttons spin around like they're in that revolver as a way to keep with the theme. It's very subtle. If it had a hole in the center or divots or something, it would be a lot more obvious than this flat circle, but that's probably because they prioritize making the menu look more dynamic by having an off center instead. We don't do a lot of symmetry in Persona, I'll have you know. Persona 3 Reload applies this visual effect while removing the need to scroll to a selection by assigning your four main options to the face buttons. Your other options are listed below, also each assigned a button. I know Persona 5 did it pretty much the same way, but seeing it so clean and minimal, this weirdly reminds me of how Super Mario RPG handled doing this. I wish even more turn-based RPGs could handle it this way too. And I just love how the crescent moon frames the character on the side with the command layered below. Seriously, the visual real estate here is really important. I'm so glad we don't have these massive heads on the side of the screen anymore. That kind of drove me nuts. But yeah, we see Makoto do that two-hit variation of what was almost a critical hit, followed by, oh my. Look, and I mean, look at this splash. This is how you open your main menu, and I've watched this so many times. See, Persona 5 was very intentionally loud, in your face, the menu was chaotic and everywhere. This erraticness is meant to encapsulate the nature of the Phantom Thieves. But here it's so smooth, serene, almost graceful. The number 01 changes to 02 when scrolling to items, and while it has this uneven layout, it's so much more symbolic of the melancholic tone of Persona 3. When you open up the menu in 5, it's usually quiet, but in a palace or mementos you'd hear a slap. I would love it if only during the dark hour you hear that splash effect while opening the menu. It's so good, I could just keep this animation running. Very excited to see how the rest of the menus animate when you select them. We get a very quick look at Igor and Elizabeth during the fusion of Apsaris and Silky, who made her first appearance as a Persona in Persona 5. So more recent and very likely new Personas will be added to the compendium this time around. My boy Jack Frost is ready to hee-ho all over this house again. We can see Makoto awakening to his persona, interestingly not in animation either, huh. I do love how they have Orpheus attacking this shadow to the beat though, he's such a vibe sometimes. Finally, we transition to the title card, Persona 3 Reload, coming early 2024. Now, anyone who has been following Persona 3 for years with its various versions will immediately start asking the real questions. What about the content in Fest or Portable? Mainly, where is the female protagonist, Kotone? Is the answer going to be a part of this too? How closely is this going to follow the original, and how much will it be remade? We were given some very basic answers in the trailer itself, which had a lot of us curious about what we can expect. Multiple sources have been posting interviews with producer Ryota Nitsuma and chief director Kazuhisa Wada for Persona 3 Reload, trying to clarify just how much content will be included. Famitsu recently inquired more about some statements made during an IGN interview. I want to make sure there are no misunderstandings here. Persona 3 Reload was a project meant to recreate the very first Persona 3 for modern platforms. So this means we will not include the later story added to Persona 3 Fest or the female protagonist from Persona 3 Portable. However, this does not mean that certain elements in the main story added in Fest are not included in Reload at all. This is following an interview that quickly sparked some misinterpretations on IGN, so these clarifications are appreciated. At first, people were thinking that this is really the base core Persona 3, which would have been shocking because Persona 3 Fest improves upon it in every way. It was unclear because in the IGN interview, Ryota also stated, We have remade basically everything from scratch. We have newly recorded voices, we have new scenes and events, we also have new and arranged music. So this says a lot for us. We can expect the improvements that Fest made on the original release, in a game made from the ground up. There are new events and scenes and content that we've never seen before, some of which we saw in the trailer. This is very welcome because the pacing of Persona 3 is not really the best. 
There is a lot of dead air between the full moon events, which is pretty much the only time the story progresses through the game, mainly in the first half. These are good things to know, but at the same time, this is not going to be the complete edition of Persona 3 that many of us have been waiting for. The answer will not be playable, and more importantly, the female main character's route, the Kotoni's route, is not going to be in this remake. And that's when I said, why? And then I said, why? <sighs> I mean, okay, I get having a direction. I get putting all of your focus onto the story around the character that it was originally intended for and building upon, but really? Really? Have you been deaf to the Persona community ripping each other apart over whether or not Fess or Portable is the better version? How both games have had content locked to each other and there's no way to enjoy them together? This was the chance the moment for Atlas to gather everything into one definitive edition. I hear those are popular these days. You can honestly sell the answer as a DLC episode. It's about the length of a beefy extra story to play. If nothing else, to quiet the people who complain about it. Because thinking about it, I realize I don't really care what happens to that epilogue. It's not even fun to play. It's not like Persona 5 Royal or Persona 4 Golden, where you have an entire extra semester to play within the world of the main story. Nah, you're just spelunking in a reskin Tartarus for hours to dig up story cutscenes that you can just look up online. If they recontextualize the answer, to work like the extra content in Royal or Golden, then sure, but I don't see how that's possible given the narrative. The answer is its own thing and will likely remain that way. I honestly don't think some people blindly asking for it understand that. And then the lack, no, the disrespect of excluding Kotone yet again is just, it actually breaks my heart. I did a whole segment on another video about how she was becoming more relevant, being in more titles, actually being included in promotional art for the series. For a bit, it's like she was getting proper attention, just to get shafted again? I was like, okay, this trailer is just to tell everyone, hey, Persona 3 is being remade, everyone. We don't even see Akihiko or Mitsuru. They're definitely going to save that news for later, right? It would have been visually confusing to display the prominence of blue and pink back and forth, right? <laughs> nope. We're just not going to include her. We're just not going to implement her different story dialogue, her sassy replies, or the big thing, her vastly superior social links. In Persona 3, Makoto can't even have a social link with the entire party, while Kotone can. In the original, you can only have a social link with the girls in your party. You couldn't even have a social link with Aegis until Persona 3 Fest. That was content that had to be added to the game. And yeah, they might implement social links with everyone in Reload, but Kenji here is the Magician Arcana, which is supposed to be Junpei's. Junpei is a much better introduction to how social links work than this guy. Oh, as if I needed another reason to slap this boy. They might rearrange things to have it so that you can have a social link with everyone, but the way it looks right now, the way they want to stay close to the original, it doesn't really seem that way. We'll no doubt get some features from Portable implemented here. We clearly have full control of our party with Reload, but honestly, controlling your whole party in a turn-based game is just common courtesy in this day and age. If you wanted to play like the original game or Fest, you can likely have your party control themselves under tactics. I hope that keeps the purists happy. The interviews thus far confirm that they want to stay truer to the original while updating to the modern day standards, both visually and audibly. And that's great, I'm all for that. It's what they're excluding and what we're potentially missing out on that's hurting us right now. The thing is, can I even be mad? They are taking at least some directions with this remake into the game that we want to see. Look at how nice this comparison looks. Not just that, but the script is being altered too. They are going to be combing through this entire script to polish the wording to meet better standards. Or at least I hope so. Have you ever heard any human being saying I got all geeked up about anything? Geeked up? Kenji, I swear, this is why we want to smack the cringe out of you. At least this sounds like a sentence I'd hear someone say today. I'm just conflicted because there's so many things to be excited for. There's new animated cutscenes that these screenshots give away. The map looks so nice and vibrant, it shows where you can talk to a social link. This question right here, it was never in the original Persona 3, I think. I'm guessing that a lot of these, or at least most of the questions will be different, which I'm glad for because I am so tired of getting this question wrong. Every single time I forget which direction water swirls down a sink. Do you know? I dare you to tell me in the comments without looking it up. Thinking about it, I am ecstatic about the potential of Persona 3 getting so many new fans hooked onto it. It really is a complete refresh. The music in the trailer is fantastic, and you can hear Tartarus' theme right in the intro. About free, but I can't 
and I'm sure as heck we're going to be hearing a lot more of that hip hop vibe that the game went for. Speaking of audio differences, a big change is that the entire main party is being recast with new voice actors to perform all the lines in the game. All of them. And honestly, looking at this list, I am really open to hearing their interpretations. I've had the opportunity to interview some of them, like Allegra Clark, who was taking over Terra Platt as Mitsuru. In the original, she did Mitsuru and Elizabeth. And if you've heard Allegra Clark in other games, she's got a range to do more than one character in a single title too. I feel like they would have announced that right away, but it's a fun thought to humor. I have a lot of confidence that this cast, some of which are big Persona nerds like ourselves, are going to do them justice. It will be different, but it's going to be good. Yeah, as I mentioned, I'm in such a confused state of excitement right now. I love this game. It got me into the Persona series on the PS2 and changed the way I viewed storytelling in games. It helped inspire me to write my own story in a somewhat adjacent setting. And that inspiration was rekindled when I played Kotone's route in Persona 3 Portable. But it really is just the lack of having her that makes this so difficult to come to terms with. I'd argue that she is essential to the experience. Contrasting their situations in this game is part of the fun. If you have a party of just girls as a male, you might get called out for it like, oh, so this is your harem, huh? But then when you're a girl leading the charge with the guys, they're like, oh hell yeah, this is awesome. I personally find it just really amusing and fun with what they do with the writing. This carries on everywhere outside of Tartarus too. There is this girl who is thirsty for Mitsuru and you can get different dialogue for her throughout the game. At one point she asked, you saw Mitsuru's senpai in a bathing suit at Yakushima? Did you get any pictures? To which Makoto can respond with, nah, or yeah. If you talk to the same girl in Kotone's story, her answers are, nah, or I'll sell you one for a thousand yen. Her tongue in cheek humor is just really funny that she'd sell her friend out for the price of lunch. She doesn't actually give her a photo, by the way, she's just teasing the student. And it's this kind of lighthearted writing, little changes that make this story her own, and we're missing out on that. She is a bubbly light of positivity in one of the bleakest stories ever told in video games, and I cherish her for that. Before you even start playing, Kotone was introduced as a new experience in the story, not just for women that are playing the game, and not just some replacement. Persona Q2 could partially be interpreted as, you belong here, you're a part of this crew too, we wouldn't just leave you behind. There are literal themes alluding to Kotone feeling as if she doesn't actually belong in this group. And then this happens. We're left here shrugging, not sure what else to do, but just accept it now. All this would honestly take is just some new models, recolor the assets to pink with a risk editing of the script, change the he's to hers and flavor up some of the text. But what do we know, right? Watch them release like a Persona 3 Complete Eclipse Edition or something, just like Royal or Golden that adds the Kotoni route and the answer epilogue, which, ah, oh god, that really does sound like something they would do now, isn't it? No! No! If you want my honest opinion, as things stand now, you might as well play Persona 3 Portable on Switch, Xbox, whatever you want, and play Kotone's route. It costs about 20 US dollars right now, so you won't have to pay the usual full price of a game. Then if you're interested enough, give the remake a try. I feel like, or I hope rather, there's going to be a lot of differences from the original to the new. And if it ends up not being your thing, you at least didn't pay the full price of it like you would have for the remake, unless you got Game Pass! But I am always going to say that there's something about P3 Portable that's worth playing. The entire package of this game is a special experience, and I wish Atlas could view it the same way that we do. And that's my quick first take of Persona 3 Reload. Wow, that kind of turned into a mini-analysis there, oops. But how excited are you for Persona 3 Reload? Will this be your first time playing P3? Or are you crushed that we're not going to get all the content from Fest and Portable? I could ramble about this for a long time, but we just don't know a lot yet, and we'll likely keep getting more news shortly after this video is out. Unless it all just keeps leaking. But thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to keep up to date with more Persona 3 and other gaming content, consider subscribing to Good Vibes Gaming, leaving a like and comment, ringing the bell, checking us out on Twitch. And for just $1 on Patreon at GV Gaming, you can enter the dark hour with the rest of our community on our Discord server, where you can tell me how geeked up you're getting thinking about the three games Atlas announced this month. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. We're never saying that again. God damn it, Kenji. That's all for now. Till we meet again.